Welcome back to part 3 of making my white reception gown. In the last episode, Kathy got me started on cutting the bodice from the netting. This will be the base for sewing on the applique. Once all my pieces were cut, I pinned the princess seams together and sewed them down. I also went ahead and sewed the front and back bodice together at the shoulder and side seams. <laughs> Next is the most fun and creative part, adding the lace applique. Kathy quickly demonstrated how to do so and then I went home and got to work. I began by cutting out different sections I liked from each lace and at this point, I have no clue if it'll work, so I just cut a few I like to begin with. The second lace had beads and sequins strung on, so I had to go back and tie them off or they'll fall off. You can always go back and sew them back on as well, so it's not a big deal, but it is a pain in the butt. This last one, I didn't incorporate as much as the other two, but there was one little piece from this lace that completed my design, so it still was useful. I first pinned the mesh bodice to my dress form, which is a little bigger than I am, so I just did my best to make everything lay flat. We also stay stitched the neckline to prevent it from stretching while I work on it. It'll be removed the day of the party. There's no better way to explain this process than to just jump into it and start pinning random pieces in place until you have something you like. I'm so indecisive and changed my mind a few times in between, so this took a very, very long time. I enjoyed every moment of this process though. Here's when the back started looking more whimsical and asymmetrical, which I loved. So I took apart half of the front bodice and tried something different to follow that theme. This is what I came up with, but it was too asymmetrical for me now. So I rearranged the right side to match the left and everything started coming together. It was symmetrically asymmetrical and after two days of playing with the design, I was finally satisfied with my creation and can now take it off my dress form to hand sew everything down. Before hand sewing, I prepared a bunch of thread with some wax to save me some time. I normally don't do a lot of hand sewing, so I attempted to sew it on my machine with an embroidery foot first, but decided not to risk it in case anything went wrong or moved out of place. My machine actually ended up staining my dress later somehow, so I'm glad I went with hand sewing. 
It was a little overwhelming hand sewing at first and I didn't enjoy it, but once I found a rhythm that worked for me, it ended up being very therapeutic. The most annoying part was the thread getting caught on every pin and applique on the bodice. Next time, I'm using satin pins because they don't have a ball or a big shape at the top for the thread to hook onto. You will poke yourself a million times as well throughout this process. My lace had the cording around the edges which moved around and started lifting up so I hand sewed over the cording to hold everything in place. I even reinforced the sequins and beads in case there was a loose thread and they end up falling off. I would say hand sewing this entire bodice took me 15 to 20 hours. I was a little new to it though so next time I should be way faster. I also don't want you to think that I sat at this table hand sewing the whole time. My butt was on the couch watching movies. Woohoo! I'm basically done with the entire bodice. I did leave the bottom pieces unsewn because we have to lift those pieces out of the way to attach the skirt. Moving on to the skirt. I cut out my face skirt and lining skirt all from the same fabric. Five yards was just enough to cut out my pieces. I actually had to rearrange the last piece differently to fit the train because it took up so much space. And my train isn't even super long, so something to keep in mind if you're making your own dress with an even longer train. Once the skirt is all cut, I sewed each layer at the side seams. Now I can face the bodice right side together to one of the skirt, making sure to flip the applique out of the way at the waist. Then I base stitch the first skirt to the bodice so it stays in place for when I permanently sew the other skirt on. Next, I can permanently sew the other side of the skirt right side together to the bodice. I closed up the center back of the skirt up to where the zipper will end and now I'm ready for my fitting with Kathy again. Okay. So what we're going to do is on the inside we're going to we're going to mark where we're going to meet. Mm -hmm. We're going to flip it like this and then we're going to sew it together. Okay. Like this. I'm sure you get the idea. Yeah. Like that. Uh, right sides together. Of course, of course, you'll line the, um, you know, the seam allowances up. Okay. And that's where you'll have, that's how your hem will look when it's done. It'll just be, there will be no stitching. Oh, okay. okay. So, and even if we can't get that done exactly with the, with the front, no, we can. We're not even going to go there. We can. We can do it. We're the can-do kids. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, this length is perfect. perfect. Absolutely perfect. After Kathy marked my hem and fitted the center back on me, it was time to add in the invisible zipper. Like so many of you, invisible zippers scare me because they can be so hard to line up. But Kathy taught me her foolproof method of installing them and I am forever going to use it now. Let me know down in the comments if you think Kathy and I should make a video together sharing her technique. She even had these super heavy duty and strong invisible zippers that she gave me to use, which made the dress feel a lot more expensive. Uh oh, we should have painted your fingernails to match mine so they think this was you doing it. <laughs> 
Once the zipper was in, Kathy showed me how she finishes off the bottom of the zipper tape and she taught me how to make elastic loops for the back of the dress. I can honestly watch her work and take notes forever. Next, Kathy recommended I added some horsehair braid at least to the front of the skirt to give it some structure. So I am sewing the horsehair braid in place first before we flip the two skirt layers right sides together and sew the entire bottom of the dress. We evenly pinned the hemline right sides together and pulled the dress inside out through the lining opening of the zipper. And then I sewed the two skirt layers along the entire bottom. This is us admiring how beautiful the hemline turned out. Did you see how much progress I made at Kathy's house? I'm practically done with my dress now. All I have to do is hand sew the lining skirt to the zipper tape and sew the buttons to close up the back of the bodice. The rest is all small stuff from here. Look at how beautiful the inside of the dress is after the lining is attached. Now I can sew three buttons to match the loops. Once the buttons were in, I went back and added more applique at the waist and to cover up the loops. My last day working with Kathy on this dress has come. As a thank you, I got her a gift and made her a card with one of the lace from my dress. Remember that stain I got on the lining side of my dress? Well, Kathy got it out for me! <laughs> Grandma. My Vanna. <laughs> this is grandma's secret spot remover and I'm gonna try and get them to sponsor us and send Kathy an entire box of this stuff because she's really selling it. I'll even link it below in my description box if you want to purchase for yourself. Oh yeah, almost going. Not that anybody was ever gonna see it, but mm -hmm. still it's nice to know that you don't have a big grease stain yeah. inside your dress. Right? <laughs> And it just takes some good old fashioned elbow grease to keep, you know, yeah. wiping it and wiping it and wiping it. Yeah. Okay. 
And it, oh, so look, there better. was lace on the other side, uh -huh. so you never would have known. Okay, <laughs> there. Thanks. Yay! <laughs> One of the last things she did for me was add a bustle to my gown to keep my skirt from dragging. And she showed me how to sew buttons down the center back of the skirt so they work with the zipper. It's important to also have the buttons down the back. That way, the bustle has something to hook onto. To make the buttons appear like they're right on the center back, I'm sewing them as close to the fold as possible without getting it in the way of the zipper. This added such a beautiful touch to the dress and I wasn't even planning on adding it before. Look how satisfying it is seeing the buttons line up as you close the zipper. Your dress. That Ooh, wow, those straps. I love it. You might yeah, I'm just gonna go get the blue stuff yeah, off. Yeah. And fill in these spots yeah. that are yep. here. But that's pretty much that's it. Pretty much it. It that's looks it. great. It's beautiful. Let's put you in a bag. Oh my gosh, so exciting. <laughs> <laughs> how cute is this thing bag? Oh, thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy I got to work on such a special dress with Kathy, but I'm also sad it's over. It's been so fun and educational. Kathy is the funniest lady I know, and it's always a party with her around. Again, thank you so much, Kathy, for being so giving with your time. I hope to be as amazing of a seamstress like you one day. So I did go get myself a manicure. Check out how pretty my nails look now. Anyways, I just wanted to say that this has been my most favorite series I documented on this channel. And it's been so wholesome seeing the process of making this dress and editing this video from start to finish. I won't be revealing the dress yet until our wedding video is done, so stay tuned for that. And as usual, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye!